<laughs> and uh, in John 1, and verse 26. Come on, Ernest. Come on, Ernest. I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And um, Sergio has been great uh, being in the same ministry as you in the, your last few months here in New York City. Um, and learning more about you, um, even though I've known you ever since I was a disciple. Uh, these past couple months have really been uh, great to, to really be in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> seeing you grow uh, to, you know, in a leadership position in, in God's kingdom, and also seeing you uh, not be in a posi position of leadership, um, I've, I've been able to see who you really are. Because uh, it's, it's not so much like, you know, uh, what everybody sees in, on the pulpit or um, as a Bible talk leader, but uh, when you're not in those positions, I was able to really see uh, your true heart. And I can honestly say you're an incredible disciple, just incredible. And, um, and, that, and that's, that's what it is, and that's what it's always about. Uh, titles or no titles, but disciple is... Uh, a disciple of Jesus and I think of John the Baptist specifically because um, rather than it always being about him and he's up front he was uh, humble enough to even say that he, uh, he's not worthy to untie Jesus' sandals um, so not even tying but untying which is an easier thing to do and he's not even worthy to do that he says um, and I see your humility, just like John the Baptist. Um, and it's very commendable to see someone lead, but it's even more commendable to see someone lead and then stop leading, but follow. Mm -hmm. And do that extremely well, just as, just as uh, amazingly. Uh, and, and I was able to see that. Um, so uh, it's been great. Uh, sharing a friendship with you, bro, and um, I know you're going to be doing great in L.A., uh, really uh, leading your girlfriend to Christ even more, um, and uh, soon marriage, and uh, I see nothing but success, bro. <laughs> That's right. Oh. I see yeah, man. nothing but success, man. And, it's a um, prophecy. And, um, whether you're leading or not, I know <laughs> that nothing but success is going to come your way. Um just like the prophets, bro. I love you. Amen. Dude. Um, JB. Dude. She, dude. You just. That's only because we cool. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. We'll say we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pre appreciate your openness. Um, I love you, man. You know, and um, this is going to sound kind of weird, but I, I am so happy to see you go. You know, oh my and, gosh, <laughs> it sounds weird, it sounds weird. but it's because, because I know you and I know what you uh, I know what you went through and what you were going through, and uh, I think this is going to be the best thing that, that can ever happen to you. You know, I see like you're, you're just different now, you know, you're just like a lot of your burdens seem to be just given to God, you know. I think it's a lot of weight that's off your shoulders, and I think that you're going to really uh, blossom in California. You're gonna really grow in California, and um, like Allstate, you're in good hands, you know, with Jared McGee yeah. and that, and, the, and those awesome uh, New York disciples that are here. Um, I learned a lot from you, you know, you being my discipler, you know, and everything was genuine, you know, like you poured out your heart to me, like a lot of things that you went through, I could definitely relate to, you know, and and you're never been the most extroverted person, you know, but not, I guess now more than ever now. But you, you tried your best, dude. There were times that we had, like, we played video games for D time, like, you had a little family time, and you just, you know, you poured your heart into everything you did. The time you went, um, we went, we were sitting with a brother, and we um, hung out with him, and you went to the drift shop, drift shop, and we went shopping. That was a, an experience I'll never forget. Yeah. You know, I think you're an awesome guy. You know, I think the fact that you're, because you're a teacher, like, a lot of disciples are either have a background in teaching or in social work. 
And because you're a teacher, it really helps you in your ministry. Because yeah. you have that background. Because you're able to teach people effectively because you have that mm-hmm. skill. It kind of enhances everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're going to be an awesome, uh, like, just like Ernest said, awesome uh, boyfriend and husband someday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and like some happy you know, Revelation 23 what it means oh. for you <laughs> and how it's going to continue to grow you and you're going to be amazing, Kyle. And it's, it's going to be that, that pride I'm going to have. And I'm like, well, Sergio's doing this. So he's, he's blowing up in California. Yep, because he came from New York. He discipled me, you know? Come on. And we have that friendship. So I guess it's time for me to end. The music is coming on. The lights are going on. I'm going to wrap it up, right? I love you, Ruth. All right. Hi, Sergio. Hey, Ruthie. I have a scripture for you. <laughs> Ruthie. Me of you. So in Ezekiel 22, um, starting in verse 30, it says, I look for someone among them. Um, actually, sorry, verse 29. The people of the land practice extor- extortion and, <laughs> I wish I could read, and commit robbery. <laughs> they oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. And, um, like, one memory I'll hold on to about you is that when our Bible talk was hurting, you stood in the gap. Mm -hmm. You built up the wall. You just saw the need and saw that God was calling you, and so you went for it. And, like, I remember, like I told you already, where uh, you shared, like, yeah, I have a fear of, speaking in front of crowds but then um like I remember the day you got a standing ovation after a sermon you know what I mean and how um a visitor leaned in and told me like wow like during bible talk um or after bible talk that she was like yeah I've never seen this before like he really um taught the bible with authority you know and so it just goes to show how God like really worked and moved and did great things in you. And I know that wherever there is a need in California, you'll definitely stand in the gap, you know? Um, And it's been great. Um, All the crazy memories we've had, I'm drawing a blank now, but there are a lot. (laughs) Um, Even at work, like we ended up working on the same floor. That's crazy. But I love you and I can't wait to see the amazing great things. In California, I know people are talking about your wedding days. So. Oh my God! <laughs> what is Revelation 23? 24? Can you video? Okay, cool. Brittany. Oh great! Hey, Sergio. I have a scripture as well um, that made me think of you and just how I've seen you in the kingdom and where you're just going. So 2 Corinthians 2.14 reads, But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. And I read that because I, I think it's so perfect that I got to go back to the roof because I think I'm going to piggyback off of what yeah. she was talking about because we were in the same Bible talk. Right. And um, we were in a Bible talk that was hurting. We lost our leaders. Um, really pillar people in our group went to different places. And... You were um, entrusted with a very hurting group. Yeah. And I know personally that I wasn't in my best place at that time, And but I saw you fight for us. I saw you really um, just come in, give your whole heart, mm-hmm. and we saw a lot of victories together. It was not like all peachy clean at first, but we saw baptisms, we saw um, family being built. Yeah. And um, it has a lot to do with you being the person who led that group and God determining that. Come on. And um, I was, I got to see you grow up too, I feel as though. Like, <laughs> I saw you rise up and I definitely see that you have a gift. You're definitely um, very, very well spoken. You can break down the word and um, you have a presence when you preach. And um, it's really cool because now you're going to California you're going to spread all of those gifts there, but you're going to learn so much. And it's going to change you in ways, like being out of your comfort zone, being across the country. And it's going to be a great opportunity for you and God, for you to, like, refine yourself and him in a new territory without the relationships that you had here. Yeah. And you're going to grow in ways that are, like, 
you just wouldn't have if you didn't have this opportunity. And you can speak with your girlfriend, that's cool too. But um, yeah, you're gonna spread that aroma there and um, they're lucky to have you, you're lucky to have that experience and I can't wait to see everything on Facebook. Because I definitely see like, <clears throat> you have a future in the kingdom. We all do, of course, but you, yeah. um, we'll see where life goes for you, but I will be watching and rooting and I'm just happy to help you celebrate your yeah. going. Tracy. I served you. Um, what the scripture that I think of for you is Proverbs 18, 24. It says, um, one who has unreliable <laughs> friends soon comes to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And uh, I don't have any physical brothers, but I definitely feel like you're one of my big brothers. Um, I really appreciate the time that we spent leading together. Um, I feel like I got to joke with you a lot, and you got to pick on me a lot, but I think that's what we needed, um, just a lot of laughs, and um, I, I just really appreciate those times, and I'm here if you ever need anything, any advice, because it seems like Celine's a lot like me, so, you know, if you need girl's perspective on things, give me a call, um, but I'm just really excited for you and for her, and um, I, I do think that this is going to be a great experience for you to get out of New York and just grow in a different way. Um, and it's probably going to be extremely scary because everything is going to be new. But sometimes that's what we need to kind of just take off and soar. And I think that's what uh, the plan that God has for you is. You know. um, but I love you a lot, and I'm here for you. Luke. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Luke. It's like a lukewarm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Sergio. Bro, well, I, um, I, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, you're a lot of fun to mess with because yeah. you, get, you get amped up pretty yeah, easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of us are kind of just going <laughs> to go get you a little bit. And, <laughs> um, I'm definitely gonna miss that. Um, I know that's for you. <laughs> but um, I uh, I have scripture, and I always try to think of um, a, you know, a situation like this of a, a, a scripture or someone that um, you like you, you know you remind me of in the Bible. And uh, the person I, I thought of was Levi or Matthew, um, who actually wrote the Gospel of Matthew. And um, in and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But in Luke five twenty seven, it says, "After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting in his tax booth. Follow me," Jesus said to him. Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. And uh, you know we're we're kind of familiar with you know Peter, James, John, the unschooled ordinary fishermen. And uh, a lot of times we think of the apostles as these guys who are just kind of reckless. Mm -hmm uneducated maniacs, right? And uh, oftentimes we really like those kind of guys who were who were just like that. Uh, Matthew was very different. You know, he was a tax collector. He was a professional. He was orderly, organized. And, uh, and that's why I picked him. Because uh, when I think of someone, when I think of you, I think of someone who's organized, ordered, <laughs> you like structure, you like your time frame, you like the guys you disciple to show up during their time frame, and if they don't, then you're not real happy about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't like to you don't like to have this uh, flexibility to to get outside of uh, what uh, you had planned. And I think about Matthew along with all these other maniacs, and how it probably drove him nuts. And uh, how Jesus called all these different guys, um, and yet he called them where they were, but didn't allow him to stay there. You know, the unschooled, ordinary fishermen end up, by the end of their life, writing some of the finest Greek literature of the day. The books of Peter and, and uh, John, and 1st, 2nd, 3rd John are some of the finest Greek that was written in the first century uh, from the unschooled and ordinary fishermen. And, um, and what's cool about Matthew is um, he would go on to evangelize Ethiopia. And he ends up dying in 74 AD in Ethiopia. And so this guy who is like, you know, who you kind of like a, 
real orderly, professional guy ends up going to evangelize the continent of Africa. And so, although that's where he was when he was called, that's not where he stayed. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I, I appreciate you for where you are, and I think I want to call you to be like Matthew and to go beyond. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, don't just be how you are, but grow in the way that you need to so that God can use you. Um, I agree with everybody else. So we'll get you married off real quick. Amen. I mean, we're already on this program as it is. Yeah, it's Revelation like 25. It doesn't mean we need to switch gears at all. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll still uh, work on that. But uh, I'm excited to uh, to see how you're going to continue to grow. And uh, Los Angeles is going to stretch you in new ways. You know, it's beautiful and there's palm trees and everything, but uh, it's 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 different. You know, and um, it will cause you to grow. And I think just my charge is to learn to roll with it and and be a little bit crazy and be blown by the wind. And uh, yeah, don't bro. don't be rigid, but uh, be the man that uh, God needs you to be, so that you can be like Matthew and evangelize the continent. Wow. So, bro, Thank I love you, and I'm gonna miss you. Amen. Shame. Sir. Shame. Shame. My man. Sugar shame. Uh, start off with a scripture. It's a uh, Proverbs chapter eleven, verse fourteen. It says, "For lack of guidance, a nation falls, mm. but victory is won through many advisors." And uh, when I think of you, Sergio, I just think of a guy that's just always going after advice. Like, is you always ask for help? You never try to do things on your own, uh, even though you you can. I know you you have that kind of discernment where you know what to do. But your, your attitude is always to like seek advice and to go to, to everyone uh, because it's your life, it's other people's lives on the line. And uh, it says like victory is one when you go and seek advice. So I, I, was, I look at your life and I see victory in the things that you've been able to do. Uh, and that's what I come about because uh, you're not prideful, like uh, you're really humble and it takes a lot of humility to go to people for advice. And I think that's why you're like successful and that's why you're still here today is because you always go after that. Uh, and that's what's really, really great. I remember just being in Orlando, you would still call me and still ask me for advice on certain things. Uh, you didn't just let the friendship fall or anything like that. And that's what I, that's what I know is gonna happen when you go to California. You're not gonna let the friendships that you have in this room uh, fade away. Uh, you're always going after it and, and stuff like that. That's why, I mean, we, we, we're losing you as far as like you being in the New York church, but we're definitely not losing a brother. Uh, I don't see you going out there and uh, Falling, I don't see you going out there and leaving us behind. I see you going out there like a man full of faith, and uh, you're gonna go out there and do some amazing things. And you've done amazing things here. I remember you just getting, getting uh, the position, just leading uh, the singles here, and it was just like that. It was like you didn't know what was going on. <laughs> oh, where did this even come from? But uh, you did an amazing job. You didn't get flustered or anything. I mean, what you do, you look flustered on the outside. Like, I mean, it is kind of fun messing with you. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's super easy, man. <laughs> it's super easy. That's been recording, you know. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. He's a bit. He's recording. Right? <laughs> you look at, You're gonna look back at that and laugh. Uh, but I remember when you were first uh, asked to be in that position, and you came to me, you asked me a lot of questions and stuff, and I was like, man. Uh, I don't really know that many people that just really are just that humble. Because uh, I was a pretty young disciple, and you came up to me, you just asking me some things. I was like, man, that's how I can tell you're going to do a great job. And from when I was in Orlando, and I just saw the things that you were doing, I would come up and visit. And I'm like, who is this guy now? Like, he's he's awesome. He's cranking. Like, not like you weren't before, but it was just the, the guy that you grew into, right. uh, which is amazing. And the Bible talk was amazing. Uh, and I would love coming up when uh, when I was visiting and just come coming to Bible talk just to see your growth. Uh, so I know you're not going to stop. Uh, just go out there with the mindset of just being a, a cranking guy and like never listen to what people say. If anybody have any negative thoughts of, about why you move or anything like that, just don't let don't let anything phase you. Like mm -hmm. you're going out there for God, mm -hmm. uh, because there will be people that are unspiritual that think certain things. But never let that plus you or bother you at all. Mm -hmm. Just know that you're going out there for God and you're going to make a huge impact. I know it. So, love you a ton, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alyssa. Alyssa. Hey, Alyssa. Okay, Sergio. So, um, like everyone else said, 
I got to echo that. But um, I want to start off with the message version of Ephesians 4, verse 20 um, through 24. And it says, but uh, that's no life for you. You've learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth, precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. And like everyone in this room who has chosen to give their life completely to God, like they've had to do this, but on a very like real level, I understand what it's like to be a teacher and to get paid as a teacher and then having to give up your very job, your very livelihood, what supports you, um, the connections that you make in education for the sake of the gospel. And not because someone came up to you and was like, you can't be a teacher and be a disciple. Like seeing God work inside out and making your decisions off of that um, is completely amazing. It inspires me today. So when people are like, hey, why don't you just fudge that grade? Or hey, why don't you just do X, Y, and Z? It's like, I have the conviction, but it's so amazing to have a really great example of even a, like a very strong conviction on that. Like, no, thank you. Like, not just me telling my co-teacher, like, no, we shouldn't do that, but being like, I'm willing to put my job out on the line for this. Um, and I think you're a great example of like what it means to like practically take these things and put them into practice. Being like, yes, I'm willing to give up my life. That sounds great in theory, but what does my life consist of? Okay, all these big things. And then being like, okay, well, am I willing to risk this, 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 and that? And it, it's cool being able to see like you actually have done that and you continue to do that. And that's the very reason why you're here. Like <laughs> you're doing it all over again. And yet it's not phasing you in the fact of shaking your faith. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for being a great example. And I love you. Davis. Davis. Amen. All right, man. Let's see how we do this. When I think of Sergio, I think of AMC Empire 25. And I'm going to tell you why, man. Uh, this is a movie that I've seen and is an incredible movie because I've seen the whole entire movie of Sergio since day one. I mean, it's also, I have a, I'm grateful that, that I can just be in the kingdom and not give up and just be able to see so many people grow, mm -hmm. like from baptism and like I seen your baptism. I seen everything about you mm -hmm. from your from your weakness and your strength, you know, and it's incredible. When I think of you, I think of Second Timothy chapter Second Timothy chapter one verse seven, NLT version. It says, "I for God did not give us a spirit of timidity." Or fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Like you are a brother that totally believes in that. This is just your image, because you just believe in the power of God that you can be able to get up, use that power to deny yourself and to just like really um, strive to see God's face, you know. And there's no fear in you, you know. Like um, I, I see like. I do see the, the you know, when you have struggles, but you just go through it, you know. You just don't allow fear to just take you away. You just go through it, you know. And you're a very disciplined man, you know. So it's just amazing just like to see how you were since day one and see you now, you know. Yes, I may miss a... Uh, I'm gonna lose one of my the awesome clients, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but brother Matt, uh, uh, I'm just grateful that um, that you could be here. I'm not like I'm not worthy to have you in this lounge, man. And uh, I'm just super grateful that you're here. And uh, at least we can just send you off um, with a bang, you know. So, hey. brother, love you, man. Love you. Love you. Uh, David. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on, David. Uh, man, it was amazing uh, these last this last year um, being discipled by you and uh, learning a lot from you. Um, I think I think one thing that that um, you 
really strive to instill in me is to go out into relationships. And like, I'm still learning how to do that, but it, it, it always resonated with me, so it's, it's stuck there. So, you know, eventually, like, I mean, it's, it's a goal that I have, and uh, I want to strive to, uh, to, to, to make that happen. Um, um, we've been through, you know, we've been through like ups and downs, you know. When, when you were struggling, it really hurt me. And uh, one thing you told me to do is never was never put your hope in the people, mm -hmm. and, and that and that would, that changed my life. Um, uh, so a lot of lessons learned. I, I just didn't want to see you struggle, but you know it, it was really God's battle to fight, not mine. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I really look forward to the things that God has for you. Um, I know you're going to do good. Break the cycle. You know, yeah, break the cycle. That's like that's like our thing. So you know, eventually, you and I get married because you know, oh, eventually being in, under Luke's leadership. Hey, are you married, man? Yeah. Hey, David. Like that. Come on, bro. Hey, man. Ben. Yeah. Uh, uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 7. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick tempered, not giving into drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. So, uh, uh, the first time I think I really had a good conversation with you was. Um, on the way back from uh, Shane's moving in uh, from the airport, and we it was like I just I thought you were like a lot older than me. I thought you were like we're like the same age, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I thought you were like one of the most spiritual guys I ever met. I thought you were like definitely gonna be an evangelist or some sort of uh, overseer or something. And bro, uh, I just know when I was thinking of different scriptures, I was thinking of. You know, just trustworthiness that you're just a reliable guy. <coughs> and I appreciate you a lot. And I know that you're going to be a Hi, Jamal. Big Serge. Big Jamal. <laughs> um, Serge, um, um, I remember uh, coming back from Dubai and, uh, uh, I mean, I was broke. Struggling emotionally and all types of, you know, different areas and and um, you know, all I needed was a friend and uh, you know you were beside to disciple me and and um, and I remember when we first met I was like wow this guy is sharp I, I like this guy he's yeah. really cool um, he listens and uh, he's giving some really sound advice and uh, I was like. No, I remember I asked you, how old are you? And uh, he was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm 24. I was like, wow, this guy is wise, mm. you know? Like, mm. And uh, you have a certain wisdom about mm. you that that helps uh, people in such a way. And uh, listening to what some, some of the people are saying, that, you know, if you're, if you've been a teacher before or worked in that same field. Mm. And, uh, I think that that's definitely you, you know useful. Uh, and God is able to use you in so many ways in that area. And um, I remember, uh, yeah, the times to where I was just super sad, and and you know you you never gave up on me. You, you just kept calling me and, and, and wanted to get together, and, and and you know because of those times, um, that really helped me, you know, spiritually. Uh, just by, you know, sticking in there with me. Uh, uh, the um, scripture that that uh, Tracy shared, uh, 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 a friend that's closer than a brother, uh, that's huge. And, and uh, you know, your sincere love for people and and uh, having a heart, uh, the heart of God, you know, through your love for people, uh, that's that's important. And uh, and so I really appreciate you. Really appreciate, you know, your friendship, your uh, your wisdom. Um, I mean, it, it meant so much to me, and uh, 
it seems like our our uh, relationship has it, it seems like we've been knowing each other forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in just a matter of six months you know that I've been knowing you and uh, and I really appreciate that and uh, when you go to I'm so happy for you for going to California and pursuing uh, one of God's daughters uh, you definitely deserve it uh, he's you know given you the responsibility to take care of his daughter and, and uh, because uh, when I think of you I think of 2 Timothy 2.15 and uh, I'll paraphrase it it says uh, do your best to present yourself um, to God as one approved a workman who does not need to be ashamed mm -hmm. and who correctly handles the word of truth mm -hmm. and so um, bro just keep preaching the word Keep doing what, what you've been doing. You made a big impact here. You're going to make a big impact over there. And uh, when you told me that you, you just had, uh, got a car, um, <laughs> that's huge. And, 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 you know, you're going to have a car there. Um, I know that ministry is a lot of campus. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, so you, you're going to be definitely uh, uh, useful uh, the, uh, the campus uh, taxi <laughs> per se but uh, I tell you what uh, that's what helps advance the kingdom and uh, you know you, you're going to be useful uh, there um, and I think California is going to really love you uh, they're going to cherish you because because of your, your leadership and because of, uh, of uh, your leadership, you know. Uh, so, um, I got so much more to say, uh, but um, we'll, we'll definitely talk one on one before you leave. And I'm going to miss you, bro. Love you. Uh, Omar. Uh, Omar. So I got a scripture, and I said, uh, so the decree was issued to be put, to put the wise men to death, and man was sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. And uh, Sergio, when I think about you, um, I think of a man who uh, is well put together, uh, who's sharp, well spoken. Um, and um, man, we're like, I could definitely say you're like one of my best friends in the kingdom. <clears throat> you know, uh, before I got baptized, I uh, remember I was in my locker room during my lunch break and I received a phone call and it was you calling and I didn't even really know how you look like. I know I gave my phone number out to some brothers and we ended up just having a great conversation, you know. And um, for the past like three years and a half, you know, um, you've been there for me. You know, you're the one that I, even coming back from Manila, you're like the first person to call me, you know, um, my contacts all got raised, and I saw a phone ringing, and like I knew it was you, mm -hmm. and I picked up, wow. and it was you, you know, so you're definitely a brother that always calls me, you know, um, uh, I tend to get busy <laughs> and not reach out to you as much, <laughs> but, uh, but you definitely, you know, stuck in there with me. Uh, call me randomly. We have hour long, two hour lo long conversations. Sometimes we go on prayer walks together. We just hang out. Um, so I definitely admire that. I'm a quality type, uh, quality time person. Um, so, man, we have like so many memories together. You know, just so many great talks. You know, just traveling. Um, just uh, seeing you, just from, you know, you've always been like great hard worker, but definitely you stepped up to the max, you know, just leading. Uh, just leading a region. Uh, the preaching was great. You know, a lot of people looked up to you and they still do. Um, you can lead hard worker. You know, you even almost drove yourself to the ground <laughs> just working hard. Like, it happens to me, it happened to me before. And, um, and it just shows that you have a heart, you know, to want to save people. Um, and time is, is valuable and you don't want to waste the time and you want to do as much as you can, you know, before you leave Earth. So, um, bro, I got you a few gifts. Oh. Yes. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, from the GLC, the Victorious shirt. Wow. So it's Amen. one of the kind, so it's for you. It's no <laughs> secret about that. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, also, when we went to the orphanage, 
um, when we got out the, 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 the buses, they, uh, a bunch of just women and kids were just like running around and they each gave one of us a necklace, you know, and um, pretty much I want to give this necklace to you. Wow. And uh, mm. it says Tiger City, so it's a nickname of a uh, city of men, the Luyang. So, uh, bro, this is a uh, one of a kind. Not that many people have it. <laughs> that is a nice but, uh, necklace. Definitely, um, it's a great memory to have, and I want you to have it. Hey man. Uh, cause it's getting late. Let's try to make this um, a little shorter. Yeah, like Sixty seconds. Uh, really sweet and powerful. Um, Jodia. Um, awesome, Serge. I'm super. You know, just grateful to be here. You know, to just like remember. You know, your your time here. And for you, I really think of the scripture. Um, uh, uh, God exalting the humble. Um, but and also opposing the proud because I feel like you've had both. Uh, both experiences, you know, and you talk about mm -hmm. where you've been, um, but God just really humbled you, and I, I just remember how uh, vulnerably you were sharing about um, where you were at and just pursuing God, you know, like just seeking God, and that's it. Um, and so I just think He totally blessed your heart, um, and I'm just, I'm just grateful for your impact here, you know, and just how relatable you've been, you know, um, just to to everyone. So I yep. wish you the best, bro. And it's kind of hard to imagine you. Not here, uh, but you know, amen. And it's just awesome to see God's plan for you um, just unfolding. So, yeah, thanks for everything. Yeah. Uh, Nick. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Nick and Fatino. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess before I get to that, uh, bro, when I first moved here, I gotta say, uh, you were a little intimidating to me. You were like yeah, thanks for getting open. You know, well dressed guy, <laughs> had everything together, like speaking, and yeah, I was like, man, this guy is awesome. <laughs> and, and you know, you totally are awesome, and why I got to know you. Come on. Um, as I have got to know you better, uh, I think of, dang it. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, okay, I don't need to read the scripture. It was when Joshua read, uh, wrestles with God, and that reminds me of you. Jacob? Jacob. Jacob. Jacob yeah. wrestles with God, and um, he, you know, he fights to the end. And I think that, that reminds me of, of what I see in you. He's a guy who just goes after his relationship with God and will wrestle with God and kind of put himself in the ring just to... to be a contender, you know, to really keep moving and going, doing whatever it takes to maintain that relationship or to get to the next level. Uh, that's you. That's what I see in you. Uh, it's really awesome. And then at the end of the, you know, his wrestling match with God, God gives him a new name, Israel, right? Uh, so even you going to L.A., it's kind of like a, a new beginning for you. I know you wrestled just to, to get to this decision right here. So going to L.A., you have a, a chance to totally kind of restart in a lot of ways and kind of have a new a new image. Uh, so I hope you make the most of that. Uh, be super spiritual. Keep wrestling with God and keeping that, uh, you know, that, that charisma that you have, you know, that, that clean cut, just ready to do whatever needs to happen, just a uh, well-spoken guy, and bro, God's going to just pull up your life. For the <laughs> 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 From high school to college to here, uh, bro, you know, but I'm going to keep it very simple and brief, you know how deep is a Friendship, bro. So, so, um, we're getting there, but um, um, very similar to this scripture, Second Samuel, verse one, twenty-six. I agree for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were my very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of a woman. Come on. In context, listen. So, so basically, you know, Sergio, you know, we've known each other for so long, you know. We have that deep friendship like David and Jonathan. We slept in the same bed together. He's the first brother that... No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I got a lot of editing to do. You know, you know, so, 
So he was the first brother that I allowed to come and sleep in the same bed with me. And you know, uh, bro, um, you're like a very dear brother to me, bro. I appreciate God. you a lot, bro. And you already know, man. And when you go to California, I'm gonna come and visit you very often. Yeah. Have fun. Aww. But bro, okay. hey, man, I love you. Hey, hey Dean. Serge. Uh, so the scripture that comes into my mind is uh, Proverbs 7, verse 2 and 3. Uh, Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teaching as the, as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablet of your heart. Uh, so basically, like uh, being the disciple uh, for my early days of Disciple, you were my disciple, and the one thing that stood out to me is always you, not only telling me, but showing example about like remembering scriptures that you have remembered and challenging me to do the same. Um, and some people can just say like, "Hey, memorize it," but you were like, you first showed that you have memorized it itself, uh-huh. and then telling other like, "Okay, I've done it. You can do it too." Mm-hmm. Uh, especially like the area that you struggle and you so like, you need to memorize all the scriptures like. Um, and the practice of just having a plan for me as well. Um, amen, like it didn't work out very because we changed the ministry and stuff, but you were going to the plan, like you had plans set up for your, like not only you had the vision for you, but someone you disciple, you had the vision for them also. Like that shows uh, a great quality of leaders. They don't care about themselves, but they also care about people that are leading, like their future and their improvement as well. Um, another thing, another great quality of leader that you had was uh, being open to a comments or improvement within the Bible talk. Um, how like when I give you like, hey, we could have improved you like, instead of like, oh, I don't know, like, you're like, yes, we can definitely do that. So like good observation, like being the humble, even though you were the leader of the Bible talk, um, being humble to noticing like where you were short in, um, but not being prideful about it, like, oh, I was not, I was, or trying to justify yourself, you know what? Mm-hmm. Like, that's a good, like, observation, being like, I'll make sure to avoid that in the future, or, like, remember said. Um, so basically, like, those are the quality of the leaders that, um, that actually I look for, like, one, because as scripture said, you need to be servant to be leader, and you wear it there, like, you know the scripture, you memorize them, you have written in your Bible on the slave that, things that you struggle with, you share about what you struggle with and how you overcame it by just basically by reading the, uh, memorizing, not reading, but memorizing the scripture and having them, and just in case you forgot, you just had it in the back of the Bible, um, your Bible. So it's most about what I appreciate in any leader is leading by an example, because I've yeah. seen many people uh, who just can talk the talk but can't walk the walk. Yeah. So, but you're not one of them. You actually first walk the walk, and then so like you see what I did. Just repeat that after, and so and Bible calls you to do the same thing. You make the disciple by showing what you're doing already, and then you tell them to obey. They don't say like you just tell, but you don't become disciple. Like right? right. you have to be disciple first. You need to do everything, and then ask the people to follow you, like what you have done. And so you got that off, bro. Oh, that's it, bro. Marcus. Well, hmm. All right, so Jim, uh, I guess I'll start off by yeah, the Go on, Marcus. Uh, scriptures in 2 Corinthians 7. Come on, Marcus. Verse 5. It says, uh, For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn. Conflicts on the outside fears of it. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. I was kind of just uh, thinking about, like, you know, just all the great qualities that people have, like the brothers and sisters around you, being able to observe just by being around you, uh, being encouraged by just, uh, I guess just the wisdom you have and who you are, but seeing how, in the same way, you're going to uh, you going to California, it's going to be other form of encouragement for them. So even though, like. We won't be able to physically have you here. We know that your spirit is going over there to really encourage them. And just kind of like learning from the spirit that you have and the influence that you have through just the wisdom and just the genuine care that you show towards others. Um, that we can also learn to imitate that 
and have that same kind of impact if we were to go somewhere else to have that same kind of uh, to leave that same mark for your, mm-hmm. like wherever you go. Yeah. So um, I just appreciate you. Uh, I'm just giving your heart wherever your heart was needed, bro. Uh, just looking out for people and just like just caring. You know? Thank you. <laughs> hey man, that's a good thank you. There. Hi. So, um, Sergio, Noreen, I just want to say I want to keep it really quick, but um, I want to read Matthew 25, verse, verse 20. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, You entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. Is Master reply, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your Master's happiness. And I share that because over the course of knowing you, I had the pleasure of seeing just how talented you are. Come on. You coming into the kingdom, I thought, that's awesome, we have another brother. But I didn't realize just what we were getting when you were baptized. Mm-hmm. until you made the decision to leave and really give everything to God. And it was like a 180. And I got to see your transformation. And honestly, bro, I was blown away. You definitely showed that you are a man of God, that you have deep convictions, that you are able to inspire and convict through your words, through your life, through your example. Um, and, and that, you know, through... Through you, God can God really can work powerfully to change hearts, and I totally still believe that. I believe you're an incredibly talented brother, and uh, my I'm glad that I got the pleasure of seeing that up front and center in the church. Um, I feel like I feel like as a sister, I don't always get to know all the, you know, I don't get to I don't I don't know all that has gone on in your walk with God over the past year. I know you've been open with me about. Uh, some of the hardships, but I do appreciate um, those times you've shared with me, gotten vulnerable and open with me. Um, but I, I do believe in you. I really do believe um, that God has called you to do amazing things for him. Um, and my prayer and hope is that, yeah, that you're going to do even greater things in California, that you're going to lead in a powerful way there. And who knows where the wind will blow you next, you know? Maybe even you'll come back to New York. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with your wife. With your wife. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I am happy for you that you're dating. I know you're not engaged yet. <laughs> so I'm not going to make any comments about that. <laughs> um, but, I, but it's exciting to be dating, and I hope that you're able to just get to know her and build a great friendship. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. Amen. Clifford. Come on, Clifford. Right. CJ. Right, Sergio. Come on, bro. We're going to keep this a dry free zone. <laughs> what you want? I know. No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep it short. I just want to say that, uh, like, bro, you've been like a very, very big part of my walk with God. Like, uh, like back from from when we uh, we ushered back in PS9 for the first time that we talked about our secret business plans, and then like back to, and then all to when you, know, you started leading the John Day Bible talk, like the original John Day Bloodhounds Bible talk, no. and then it's like and like we just like we just like did our best to like evangelize and like meet with like new men and all that stuff, and then we moved on to the less just uh, those times on the train that you just be. You just being knocking out after like we just talk <laughs> for like 20 minutes, and then I'll just be like, "Yeah, you sure take that, bro?" Like I'll wake up when we get there, and it's like, it's like times like those is like when we were able to like build the friendship that we have, and like uh, even like from uh, like last night when we were able to hang out at Coney Island with the me, you, and Saul, like be able to like you know, like get make that bond even stronger, and I just want to say that. Uh, that uh, LA is lucky to have a brother like you, bro, because like you definitely have the ability to teach and just like, you know, like show men what it means to follow God. And like that is a trait that is not easily, you know, attainable and it's not easily like 
and you know train. So it's, it's bringing something that you have. And I have a scripture which is more like a blessing. So pretty much set you off to it on your way. It's in Second uh, Peter one, um, verse two, and it says, "Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord." And so I just want to say in my somewhat final words. I mean, I'm probably I'm gonna see you tomorrow at the airport. But I just want to say. I love you a lot, bro, and I'm definitely going to miss you a lot. Neyama. Hey, hey Neyama. Sergio. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, so the first time I ever visited the New York City Church was the day of your baptism. Um, and it was just really incredible seeing, like, just your spirit.